So good afternoon and welcome to today's uh, webinar, or this week's webinar on Nastran NCAD. And today we're looking at uh, the Subscription Advantage Pack release, which was a release that came out a few months ago, upgrading some of the functionality associated with the Nastran NCAD product. My name's uh, Matthew McKnight, I'm a technical specialist working out of the Melbourne office. Uh, there are my contact details if you'd like to reach out and ask me some questions around the product um, or around today's session. If uh, let's have a quick look at the the agenda for today. So we'll I'm just going to jump straight into the technical content, uh, and it won't take too long to get through. Uh, but we'll be looking at uh, the new uh, additional functionality around the NASTRAN NCAD product obviously, but in specific we're going to look at a number of key topics and those are uh, the embedder simulation import capabilities, the new, new and improved health and workflows, uh, the improved assembly support, bearing loads, mid-surfacing and then we'll take any questions that we have at the end of the session. So jumping straight into it, the, uh, the first new product or new feature that I'd like to show you is the ability now to be able to import simulation results from Inventor Simulation to Nastran NCAD. So you've run through, you've done a quick analysis or maybe you've got some legacy data that you've run analysis on prior using Inventor Simulation. Well there's now the ability to be able to bring that across into Nastran NCAD and have Nastran NCAD recognize a lot of the setup that you've previously used and then be able to leverage that and run further detailed analysis. Further to that, there's now uh, improved help and workflows with inside the NASTRAN NCAD product. Uh, with inside SOLIDWORKS, uh, remembering that NASTRAN NCAD works across the two environments, SOLIDWORKS and Inventor. SOLIDWORKS has now uh, been updated with a, uh, uh, a left to right uh, workflow like you've got with inside of Inventor. And it's been greatly improved and simplified the ribbon associated with accessing all of the most common commands that you need to inside that environment. Uh, further to this, Inventor now has, uh, well, inside of Nastran in CAD, and like you do with inside of Inventor, we now have the ability to be able to access marking menus to get to the most common features and functionality that we'd like to use. Uh, and that's accessed in the same manner, so through a right click and further to that, you can also apply loads, constraints, and mesh uh, control by directly clicking on geometry of your part, and that will then give you the option to be able to apply those without the need to go through a, a marking menu or up to the, the ribbon toolbar. And finally, in this area, another improvement that's been made is uh, the, the uh, product guidance that you get by interrogating the items with inside the ribbon toolbar. So if you hover over an icon, now you get a what's called a double level tooltip, and that tooltip will give you some guidance around what each of those tools can help you with and the functionality associated with them. So if you're new to uh, Nastran NCAD, it's invaluable. And you've also find that there's now improved assembly support. So what do we mean by that? Well, Materials will be automatically brought across from Inventor. So if you've set up uh, Inventor and you've associated materials to all of your parts or bodies, then those materials will be uh, brought across to Nastran NCAD and associated to the geometry. Uh, but material properties can be overridden with inside of Nastran NCAD, so which enables you to quickly and easily uh, you know, cycle through a number of different alternatives as well inside the Nastran simulation environment. Uh, further to that is also the ability to be able to use uh, representations in the form of design level, uh, design view or level of detail. So you can now open up a, uh, a, an analysis or a simulation inside the Nastran NCAD environment on say the top level assembly, but then you know, go down to the specific area that you want to run your analysis on using either design view or level of detail to associate to that area. Bearing loads is another uh, great addition. 
Uh, there's been a lot of people, I think this is the second most common request on the idea station. You can now add bearing loads to as a, as a load input inside the uh, NAS Training CAD environment. Um, so this is more representative of the interaction that you would expect of say uh, of areas between or contact areas between shafts and bearings or bushings. Um, and you can see there that you get a graduated application of the, uh, the load around the cylindrical uh, surface. And then mid-surfacing as another fantastic uh, addition. So now uh, uh, you have a, a complete set of tools that enable you to convert your geometry from uh, 3D mesh and bring that across and then associate uh, shell elements to it. You can see here that there is quite a considerable savings in terms of the nodes and elements associated. I think about a quarter of the number of nodes and over a fifth, almost a sixth the number of elements. So uh, this is going to significantly improve the performance of your analysis and, and reduce the run times associated with it. But at the same time, you know, accurately representing uh, things like bending with inside of your uh, sheet metal components. So thin structures, uh, another fantastic additional with, with inside the NAS training CAD environment. So, but without further ado, let's jump into Inventor and have a quick look at some of these new additions. So I've got uh, this bale grabber assembly. And what we want to do is uh, I'll try and highlight as many of these as I possibly can in five or ten minutes. So if I start off a study, like I said, uh, the study now gives me the ability to be able to associate uh, design views or level of details and I can switch between these and switch between you know the functionality and features and bodies and parts that I want with inside that environment, which makes it a lot easier to be able to navigate large assemblies uh, and work on smaller subsets of those assemblies and run analysis. Um, the uh, Further to that is now the ability to be able to import your stress results. So if we've run an analysis on, say, the arm here, let's just go have a look at the analysis. So if I go stress analysis, you'll see that we've set up an analysis, run a simulation, and maybe we want to bring it into a NAS train NCAD to run fatigue analysis or maybe we want to look at buckling, then we can quite quickly and easily do that. So inside the environments we can go into Nastran INCAD and you'll see here we've got the option to import from stress analysis. That will bring over, like we've seen, the constraints, pin constraints, forces, uh, any contacts that have been previously set up uh, into a new study ready to run. So it's a matter then of just associating any materials, maybe changing the study type that you want to run the analysis on. So defining any finer details associated with that analysis and then simply uh, running the analysis. So very quick and easy, uh, the ability to be able to work with inside that environment now. And then further to that, uh, there's a few other additions. So let's take, say, the, um, the chassis of the bale grabber and run a, a quick analysis on it. So if I go into my environments area, I can go to NASTRAN INCAD and inside this area there's a number of things I want to point out. Firstly is the ability for us to use marking menus. So if I right click now I've got the ability to be able to say assign materials or add constraints or loads or generate the mesh at my fingertips. So if I want to and remembering that you can just simply drag in a direction if I want to apply a load and I can drag to the top right and that will give me the, uh, the load input box. If I then go in I can uh, and I'll highlight a, another change in the, the uh, subscription advantage pack is now the bearing loads. So we can choose to apply a bearing load. Let's apply it maybe in the minus 1,000 total force across those two faces. Let's turn it on so that we can see it visually, change its size and maybe add some density to it. Let's rotate around so we're looking at the top of the part. And you can see here we've applied a bearing load to those two cylindrical cylindrical faces, which is maybe more representative of the pin that we're not analysing as part of that design. Uh, further to that, you'll also find that if you're new to 
mass training CAD, like we said, you're getting these double uh, level uh, dialog boxes that give us some input, some insight as to what each of these tools does and a nice little visual representation of how it can be used. So uh, if you're new, uh, another great or fantastic addition. Uh, you'll notice that the materials are coming across as well. So when we create a new study, the analysis is actually bringing across any materials that have been assigned to the part. So if this uh, material was automatic, was a material assigned to the part at the design level, and it's automatically populated with inside of the NAS training CAD environment. And then further to that, then we've got bearing loads, which is another great addition to um, the NAS training CAD environment. So in this instance, there's a number of ways that you can associate uh, thin geometry. Uh, you can offset a surface. So Maybe you want to grab a plate here, Let me bring this dialog box onto our screen. It's simply a matter of selecting, say, the face that you want to offset and giving it an offset value. So you can see here that I'm saying it's going to be a 4mm offset. As such, the plate thickness is 8mm. I can override that, however. So I can offset, say, to a specific thickness and then associate an actual thickness in the dialog box and go OK. Note that it does remove the 3D geometry and then gives us a view representation of the shell element or of a, a surface in, in preparation for um, a meshing. Uh, further to that, you can mid-surface. So we've got this mid-surface dialog box here that enables us to select a solid body and it will automatically go and create the mid-surface of that solid body. So there's no need for us to assign the thickness. It'll read the thickness from the geometry. And you can see that as we're doing this, it's added uh, the mid-surfaces up here. We've got a mid-surface which has been automatically created and our offset, offset surface which has been man manually created. The other way is to just hit find uh, thin bodies and that will then go through and interrogate the part and look for any uh, geometry that could be represented as shell elements. And you'll see that it automatically converts it over. You can see here that it gives the appropriate thickness based on the, the geometry that it's representing. Uh, but there's nothing stopping you from then going in and changing some of those. So we could go into, say, uh, this one here and reassign the thickness value, reassign what it's associated to, even change it back to being a solid, solid element if we want. So nice and quick and easy for us to be able to do that. And you'll see that we can then generate a mesh from that geometry nice and cleanly and uh, very, very quickly in preparation for analysis. Okay, so um, that's really about it for today. Um, I will look and just have a quick look and see if we have any questions. Uh, no, none at this stage. Like I said, um, you'll get a chance to follow, I'll follow up on any questions that I do have via email in the next day or two. If you'd like some further reading, uh, make sure that you check out the Nastran INCAD um, community on the forums, the Autodesk forums, where you can participate in the conversation around Nastran INCAD or a range of other products as well. Uh, further to that, there's also the Twitter feed, the Autodesk simulation feed, which has got a whole bunch of information, as does the Facebook feed. And the YouTube feed, which has got some simulation-specific uh, examples up there. Uh, more locally oriented is the Future of Making Things LinkedIn group. Uh, please join. It's a fantastic area with inside of LinkedIn where we're talking about all kinds of technology, not just simulation, but a range of um, uh, technology that's affecting the changing landscape in manufacturing in Australia and New Zealand. Again, my contact details. So if you'd like to, if you've got any questions specific to the product, uh, please feel free to give me a bell or shoot me an email or connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Otherwise, uh, as there are no questions, I will um, say thank you for your time today. Uh, enjoy your afternoon and we will hopefully see you next week. Bye for now.